Good evening, everyone. I hope my slide are visible to you all. Anyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Susri, for the wonderful introductions. First and foremost, I extend to warm welcome to each and everyone of you attended today's unique webinar. I am Dr. Gopal Krishna Purit, CEO and co-founder of Hereditary Biosciences. It is a truly a pleasure to all of you here with us today. Our webinar today is centered around the inaugurating topic is oral microbiota, significance in the pathologist of autoimmune diseases. This subject hold immerse important as we explore the role of oral microbiota in the development of autoimmune disease, which significantly contributed to our understanding of health and immunity. I would like to express my deepest gratitude to our distinguished guest speaker, Dr. Geet Priyakar, as a complete oral pathologist who currently operates in Diagnosis Center in New Delhi, India, offering comprehensive services in oral pathology, oral radiology, and hematology. We are truly honored to have here at this our guest speaker today. Dr. Kaur's expertise and contribution to this field are commendable, and uh, we are eagerly looking forward to learning from her insights. This webinar is an excellent opportunity for all of us to expand our knowledge regarding the role of oral microbiota in autoimmune diseases. Dr. Kaur's remarkable experience and contribution to the scientific community make her an invaluable resources for this event. We are eagerly anticipating the partner opportunity to benefit our expertise and to gain insight into the current landscape of disease risk reduction in the field of oral medicines. Thank you all for joining us today. Ladies and gentlemen, fast in your seatbelt. As we embark on this accelerating journey into the world of oral microbiota, pathogenesis, and its connections to autoimmune diseases in this presentation, our esteemed guest speaker will guide us through the cutting edge field of oral pathology. We will, on the oral microbiome, play a vital role in the triggering and promoting autoimmune diseases, uncovering the mechanism behind it, including uh, microbial translations, microbial mimicry, and auto antigens overproductions and amplifications autoimmune response by cytokines. So, get ready to amaze to we explore the in critic in this fatalistic field and profound impact of the modern medicines, let us up to the exciting vulgus together. So coming to the uh, today's uh, topic highlights, the role of oral microbiota is the pathogenesis of autoimmune diseases is a subject of growing of interest. The oral cavity host of diverse microbiome with over 700 uh, bacterial species. Research suggests that uh, the oral microbiota, driven by the factor like genetics, diet, stress, and infections, can play a crucial role in the initiating and uh, accelerating autoimmune diseases. Mechanism include microbial translations, molecular mimicry, overproduction of autoantigens, cytokinesis driven amplifications, and autoimmune responses. Understanding this in critical relationship holds greater promises to advance our comprehensive of autoimmune diseases and overlapping novel therapeutic approaches. So the target, the oral microbiome, potentially offering new avenues for managing the complex conditions. Once again, thank you, Dr. Gangit Priyakar for gracing us with our presence today. We greatly anticipate your time and knowledge. Now, audience, before we begin our webinar and introduce our extinct guest, uh, allow me to provide a brief overview of hereditary biosciences. Hereditary biosciences is established in 2018 and reconstructed at uh, uh, Hereditary Bonuses in 2021, the company has emerged as a leading provider of research and training services to hospitals, life sciences institutes, and pharmaceuticals companies. 
the rated device sciences is very now interested within the medical and scientific community thanks to our teams to experienced scientists and the research professionals the expertise bring them a wealth of knowledge in the field of life sciences healthcare sector and analytical and metabolic services industry with a sit first commitment of delivering quality services and innovative product our company providing features of robust national scientific advisory board additional no our team comprises highly skilled professionals including professors doctors scientists specialized in various discipline including life sciences research proteomics research metabolic research genetic diagnosis and bioinformatics the rated bio sciences is dedicated to providing high quality and cost effective solutions delivering uh, technology of support life sciences research clinical sector and industries both within the india and the global states furthermore i am Still, to announce the our collaboration with Herik Life Sciences Private Limited, which will further strengthen our capabilities and help us reach new milestones. Together, we are committed to advancing scientific research and making a significant impact in the field of life sciences and healthcare. We are proud to announce the inauguration of Heritage Bio Sciences new branch in Guwahati. Um, a significant milestone achieved last. Uh, Uh, five months ago, this uh, expansion is additions to our exciting locations of in Maypur Lagoon Road, Bhuvaneshwar. Mark a momentous momentous step for our company. So the opening of Guwahati branch underlying our uh, commitment to strengthening our presence in the dynamic field of life sciences and healthcare research. Our new branches is a state of art laboratory infrastructure, empowering us to conduct advanced research and delivering high quality services to our esteemed clients. so this expansion is not only enhance our capability but also presenting exciting opportunity for collaborations with esteemed institution of um, different uh, professionals to the we are enthusiastic about the potential this expansion holds and the positive impact we can collectively make a advance in the field of life sciences at heritage bio sciences we are focusing on the uh, portfolio of the services life sciences services and healthcare research services our focus is to providing high quality service in two main areas like life sciences services and healthcare research services in this slides uh, the life sciences services we are uh, specialized in genomics proteomics and metabolomics services our advanced uh, laboratory facility and expertise enable us to offer comprehensive solution in these areas we are catered to not only the client from the odisha we are focused into the pan india also ensuring the accessibility and convenience convenience to for our customers such as uh, such across the countries in healthcare research services we are focused to and concentrate to the research areas in the crucial for advancing in the medical knowledge and improving the patient outcomes our services in the domain include clinical microbiology infection genetics cancer genetics Uh, fertility genetics and conventional pcr based services mm, through the services we aim to contribute to the understanding prevention and treatment of various diseases and contributions we take pride to maintain the high standard quality and uh, precision of our service our team and skilled professionals include scientists researchers and technicians utilize cutting edge technology in the following strength of protocols developed protocols accurate and reliable things and get uh, provided for the results at heritage bio sciences we understand to important of research and its impact of healthcare advancements that's why we are committed to providing comprehensive services that we need to specific need to our clients and contribute to the broader specific community more information to visit our uh, website service page now we will move on the highlight to the training and research part of heritage bio academy as odisha's leading uh, training institute we are providing offer comprehensive hands on experimental research training to students and professionals alike it heritage bio sciences i bol tarmo it heritage bio academy we provide various modules to cater a diverse interest and field these include clinical microbiology and genetics molecular biology techniques advanced molecular biology and uh, recombinant dna technology Uh, clinical microbiology and nanotechnology and genetics food microbiology and genetics and many more 
Our aim is to equip participants with the necessary knowledge and practical skills required for their chosen area of expertise. Furthermore, we are excited to announce the introduction of special, specialized models. These, these include clinical microbiology, uh, male infertility, but histochemistry and immunohistochemistry, qPCR and genetic diagnosis. These models are designed to address the involving the needs for advancement in the field of biosciences. For more information, we will visit in our websites also. Now, we will move on the infrastructure of heredity biosciences. Heredity biosciences take prior to providing expressional infrastructure facility to support the training and research endeavor of our participants. We invited everyone to visit our central facility and witness the following features. World-class centralized air conditioning laboratory, high conductivity Wi-Fi study environment, compressive research learning facilities, well-trained and export trainer and demonstrators also every time. Complete hands-on individual exposure. We are committed to all the students for the complete hands-on exposure. Exposure, publication assistance for students to be writing to the publications. We will assist for the publications and placement assistance. Sometimes people's uh, students should be. We will be assisting for the placements also. So we extend our open invitations to all these interested individuals to visit our central facility that is present in the Mayapal Lagoon Road, Bhubaneswar, and witness the expressional infrastructure, supported our research and training activities. So many students, they are benefited for this uh, training activities. We are confident that we will be impressed uh, on the resources and opportunities available in insight in ends to the scientific pursuits. In the past uh, six to seven months, we have achieved significant milestones at Heredity Biosciences. We have been providing many opportunities to students. The biosciences here are similar to the business. children already completed the this will be completed with the short term and long term intensive programs. There, there go some of the students, they are going about the explanations. The program offers complete hands on experience and valuable expertise to various research areas, enabling participants to develop the, their skills and expand their understanding of the field. Some of the experimental activities of uh, pictures are pasted here. These are the some laboratory experimental activities pictures so some of the pictures we are uh, providing by the certificates some of the professionals uh, scientists and uh, professors they are providing for the certificates so over the past six months uh, heredity biosciences has been actively engaged in the placement activities we are thrilled to share some of the highlight to the student achievements so several, uh, several of our students have successfully completed the interview and uh, with reported the organizations. We are just delighted to announce that some of the, they have the offered position eagerly waiting for the response. And these are the placements of the students who they are joining for the different organizations, reported organizations. Our dedicated <clears throat> so we are thrilled to have a set of complacence impressive, impressive, of heredity devices in the field of research and collaborations. Our dedicated research team has successfully published more than 20 to 30 publications. And uh, these publications showcase our commitment to advancing scientific knowledge and making significant contribution to the field of biosciences. Now, the time of, uh, for introduce our guest of speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, I am truly honored to introduce our esteemed guest speaker, Dr. Gidpriya Kaur. Dr. Kaur is a highly accomplished oral pathologist with an impressive background in the field. Her dedication to the study of oral disease and her commitment to advancing knowledge in the area have made her respected figure in the field of medical community. Dr. Kaur's educational journey includes a master's degree in oral pathology and uh, microbiology from ITS Rental College, South Eastern Sikh University, India. She has uh, also had the privilege to be a visiting scholar at the New York University, specializing in the oral biology and oral and 
metaphysical pathology with over 8 year of experience in histopathology and uh, cytology dr kaur has been at the forefront diagnosing and understanding oral diseases for expensive uh, like knowledge and skill in histological techniques histopathological diagnosis techniques and even histochemical techniques have contributed significantly in the field of oral pathology furthermore dr kaur has dedicated herself to education and research she has served as a professor at the department of oral pathology at the institute of dental uh, studies and technologies in modinagar india and uh, has worked on the accreditation as a leader of idst college meerut her passion has teaching and monitoring the next generation of oral pathologists is truly commendable in addition to her academic pursuit dr kaur is currently running a diagnosis center in new delhi india now with uh, include oral pathology oral radiology and nematology services her dedications to providing comprehensive healthcare solution is evidence for her work as a dental project coordinator at mlx and ai based healthcare solutions providers dr kaur's research interests are wide ranging and include areas such as oral oncology oral microbiome salivary microbiome genetics oral stimul cell carcinoma and oral potential malignant disorders her work has been published and one of her notable studies dedication of oral stimulation cell carcinoma with capsaicin and immunohistochemistry study has provided available insight into the field today we have the privilege of hearing dr deepak ko speaker on this topic is oral microbiota significant in the pathology set of autoimmunities her expensive knowledge and experience in oral pathology make her the perfect persons to insight on the crucial area of issues following her talk we will be have a questionnaire sections where you can engage with the dr kors and uh, delve deeper into this fascinating topic please join me in giving warm welcome to dr ritya kors we are truly honored to have here with us today and we eagerly anticipate the enlightening and engaging sections welcome to dr geet pyakar this our heritage biosciences team is a fantastic team they are uh, truly appreciated my team members for the best effort to research and uh, student standing activities thank you thank you everyone uh, first of all thank you a uh, team heritage biosciences and dr purohit for inviting me as a guest speaker i hope i am audible uh, first of all thank you a team heredity biosciences and dr purohit for inviting me as a guest speaker i hope i am audible now can you uh, listen to me hello yes yeah okay yeah now can you see the presentation yes yes yes, yes uh, thank you sushri for helping me i'll just start with the topic the topic of my presentation is is oral microbiota significant in the pathogenesis of autoimmune diseases i hope i'm audible yes yes uh, so first of all we'll talk about the microbiota and microbiome what is microbiota and microbiome and what is difference between a microbiota and microbiome the oral microbiota consists of assembly of microorganisms belonging to different kingdoms in in which prokaryotes include bacteria and archaea and eukaryotes are protozoa fungi and algae all living microbial organisms constitute the microbiome basically all the uh, different kind of organisms are considered as microbiota but oral microbiome is defined as the whole collection of micro microbes including all their function interaction metabolites occupying oral cavity the sum of the microbes and their genetic information and the environment in which they interact is also known as oral microbiome so basically oral microbiome is combination of microbiota along with their functions interactions and metabolites now coming on to oral cavity anatomy and composition of oral microbiome in oral cavity as we know it is exceptional compared to other human body parts oral cavity begins from lips and extend to other parts such as palate 
tongue, which is mobile. And then uh, along with that, we have masticatory and non-masticatory mucosa. Uh, among that, I would like to talk about the gingiva. It's also uh, a part of uh, mucosa. Along with that, we have buccal and labial mucosa. Other structures like teeth is the hard calcified tissue, which is present in the oral cavity. And the main oral microbiome present are bacteria, fungi, viruses, archaea, and protozoans. Now coming on to the history of relationship between microorganisms and humans. In this, the co-evolution of the microorganisms. As you can see in the blue, blue are representing the microorganisms and the green color is their respective host. Host can be human body or other species. Basically, it dates back to 1.5 billion years and which was responsible for mutual adaptation and functional integration and which was responsible for formation of holobiont. What is holobiont? Holobiont is basically a human body in which microbial symbionts are present along with their genomes. In oral microbiota, around 700 different kinds of microorganisms exist in the oral cavity. Bacteria are the main inhabitants of the mouth. Most common oral bacteria are Streptococcus mutans, Porphyromenas gingivalis, Staphylococcus, Velonella, Prevotella, Treponema, and Lactobacillus. The bidirectional role of oral microbiota, that is eubiosis and dysbiosis. This slide was previously shown by Dr. Purohit. In this, like in case of healthy tissue, the hemostasis is maintained in the oral cavity. How hemostasis is maintained? Basically, there is equilibrium in the relation of host and commensals, whereas in case of disease state, this equilibrium is disturbed and which leads to dysbiosis. Eubiosis maintains the hemostasis of the oral cavity, whereas dysbiosis is responsible for the disturbance in the host and commensal ratio, which leads to abnormal immune response, leading to autoimmune diseases in the body. Now, there are multiple factors which are responsible for microbiota dysbiosis, the imbalance of the microbiota. So these factors responsible are smoking, genetic factors, stress, tissue injury, infection, then high intake of sugar and fat. Basically, high intake of sugar and fat are, are responsible for uh, the changes. Uh, in case of diet, there is release of dopamine, which is a neurotransmitter, which further enhances the drive for more food wanting in the body. And when there is excessive administration of antibiotics, they, it can affect the skin microbiota. Skin microbiota, when affected, they can be delayed in wound healing. As there are multiple release of cytokines and other factors like IL-17 and REC-3 REC gamma. And uh, antibiotics are also responsible for gut microbiota dysbiosis. Basically, pathogenic microorganisms, their ratio is increased and drug, drug resistance of the body is decreased in case of antibiotic, uh, antibiotic intake and which is responsible for gut microbiota dysbiosis. Exacerbation of oral microbiota symbiosis to dysbiosis. Basically, as we know, symbiosis is when the oral microbiota content is in hemostasis, that is the normal oral microbiome is present. In this case, particular bacteria of the oral cavity are streptococcus mutans, streptococcus mutans, uh, hemophilus, prevotella, fusobacterium, porphyromenas gingivalis, candida albicans, and lactobacillus. But when their ratio is disturbed, it can lead to dysbiosis of oral microbiome. And the techniques used for detection of dysbiosis are advanced DNA sequencing, imaging, which leads to triggering and worsening of systemic inflammation, migration of the oral microbiota or their products via blood vessels or via the digestive tract. And there is inflammation process and molecules which induce further systemic changes in the body. Basically, the body is disturbed. The gut microbiome is also disturbed, which leads to the autoimmune diseases and systemic diseases in the body.
The three routes through which oral microbiota influences the gut microbiota are enteral route, which basically there is translocation of the tissue in the enteral tissue is translocated, hematogenous route, which is involving systemic circulation, and immune cell migration. Basically, the immune cells in the body, that is, are dendritic cells and macrophages, they are uh, dislocated and which are responsible for these cells migrate and are uh, further disrupt the immunity of the body. Along with that, uh, the draining lymphocytes are also involved in case of immune cell migration route. Other microbiomes involved through oral cavity are slivery microbiome, which involves pore pyromenas gingivalis, fusobacterium nucleatum, agregatibacter echinomycetic comitants. As we know that oral microbiota is connected with the gut microbiota, in, like in the previous slide, I mentioned that. Now, what are the roots and how do they invade? The oral cavity, the oral microbiota can invade directly or indirectly in the intestine. Basically, the oral derived microbiota like P. gingivalis, Fusobacterium nucleatum, uh, Porphyromenas gingivalis, Klebsiella, all these are uh, indirectly translocated in the intestine and which disturbs the gut microbiota. And other mechanism, which is the indirect mechanism, is that in case of oral diseases, basically, uh, you must have heard about dental plaque. Dental plaque is uh, basically deposition of bacteria in area around the tooth and which forms the calculus and which is further responsible for oral diseases like cavities, periodontitis. So in this case, the basically, the oral bacteria specifically present on the tooth surface, we can pass through hematogenous roots, that is through systemic circulation into the intestine. Like in case of periodontitis, uh, there is invasion of the tissue, so which can lead to the involvement uh, through systemic circulation. Now, bilateral crosstalk between human microbiota and immune system. As we know that human system of the body develops during infancy, so the human microbiota plays a decisive role in the induction, training, and function of the host immune system. Early microbial exposure to infants is essential for regulating and influencing the formation of the immune system. The bacterial components from the intestinal tract can be transported to the lactating mammary glands which plays a crucial role in shaping the early gut microbiota and stimulating immune system in the infants. So basically, the immune system in the infants is directed through our gut microbiota. So how it is interdependent. Then bacteria such as lactobacilli produce metabolite like indole 3 aldehyde, which stimulates the production of interleukin-22 and interleukin-17. As we know, these are cytokines which activates aryl hydrocarbon receptors which contributes to the balance of intestinal mucosal um, immune system. This symbiotic gut microbiota is beneficial for the maturation of gut-associated lymphoid tissues. Now, as Sir has mentioned, Dr. Purohit has already mentioned that there are different pathways through which oral microbiota this biosis affects autoimmune diseases. I will talk about each pathway individually, then I will explain to you through a picture also. The first pathway is the microbial translocation. What do we understand by the word translocation? Uh, basically, it is like if a particular a microbiota is present at a particular location, but if it moves and it is located in a location where it is generally not present, that means translocation. And the main possible routes through which oral pathogenic bacteria, such as P. gingivalis and Fusobacterium, reach distant tissues and organs, trigger autoimmune diseases are the hematogenous routes and the enteral route. Basically, through these routes, the microbacteria is translocated in the intestine and is responsible for translocation to other body parts, also other organs, where the autoimmune diseases are further triggered. 
the hematogenous routes, the entry point of oral pathogens into the circulation are actually there are many starting points which through which oral pathogens can enter the circulation, the blood. Like I had mentioned previously, the oral, uh, basically like there is an oral disease called periodontitis. So the treatment of invasive oral treatments, oral mucosal ulcers, injuries, periodontitis, all these factors, because if the blood is released basically through these treatments and this blood can further reach the systemic circulation and spread to the other body parts. Then enteral root, major root for oral bacterial dissemination. Increased intestinal permeability is associated with the pathogenesis of many autoimmune diseases. Oral microbiomes are damaged by stomach acids. As we know, the oral microbiota, if they are translocated in the intestine, our stomach consists of acid, which is HCL. And HC has capacity to, to damage oral pathogens which are not general part of the intestine but these pathogens have like specifically p gingivalis have the ability to withstand stomach acidity and colonize in the intestine generally a healthy gut microbiota can confer resistance to ectopic colonization of oral bacteria oral bacteria can easily invade the gut when the intestinal microbiota is disrupted due to the administration of antibiotics. Like we have previously studied about the factors which are responsible for dysbiosis. Among them, administration of antibiotics was one of the factors, which is because of the administration of antibiotics, there is disruption of gut microbiota. And so oral microbiota can translocate in the gut because of that. Then coming on to molecular mimicry. More than 30 viral proteomes have substantial pentapeptide overlap with the human proteome. These observations suggest that pathogenesis of autoimmune diseases might be due to, this is very important point, it might be due to sharing of amino acid sequences between microbiome and the host. And so basically our metabolites are also involved like because these microorganisms, they release metabolites which are further responsible for the diseases. Molecular mimicry is involved in oral microbiota mediated chronic infection in localized and remote organ autoimmunity. So the recent evidence suggests that there is dysregulation of oral microbiome which promotes autoimmune diseases through molecular mimicry. Third part is autoantigen overproduction. All of you are from biosize background, so you must have read about inflammation, cytokines, all these factors. So what are these cytokines? Cytokines are basically are inflammatory biomarkers. So cytokines, how what they do exactly? They regulate proteolytic enzymes which hydrolyze extracellular proteins and generate re remnant epitomes. These epitomes, they serve as autoantigens and immune cells recognize autoantigens and produce antibodies. And these remnant epitomes are the key factors for development of autoimmune diseases. So basically they are autoantigens which produce antibodies and thus they play an important role in activation of the autoimmune diseases. Then fourth point is amplification of autoimmunity by cytokines. Again, cytokines are the inflammatory markers which are involved in initiation and progression of autoimmune diseases. The pro-inflammatory microenvironment modulated by the microorganisms is correlated with the autoimmune diseases. Basically, if there is infection caused by the microorganisms, uh, then that promote apoptosis, that is death of the intestinal epithelial cells and further elicit presentation of self antigens that is major histocompatibility complex to molecules which further generates autoreactive T helper cell 17 and which is further responsible for autoinflammation and production of autoantibodies. So this is how the microorganisms play a role by release of cytokines and which is responsible for apoptosis and which further generates TH17 cells which is responsible for autoinflammation. The main mechanisms by which oral microbiota dysbiosis affect autoimmune diseases. So these mechanisms 
I've just told you. Now I'll explain you in detail. Uh, the microbial translocation, molecular mimicry, autoantigen overproduction, amplification of autoimmunity by cytokines. Microbial translocation that we have studied initially that through hematogenous route and enteral route. These two are the main routes. And in this, the main bacteria of the oral cavity, that is Porphyrominus gingivalis, it releases, it increases the production of interleukin 17, and it could lead to arthritis. It involves bones, streptococcus mutants. It increases the production of TANF gamma, which leads to inflammatory bowel disease, periodontal pathogens, that is from the periodontal diseases, are gum related diseases. Through this, they can affect our liver and kidney. Whereas in case of enteral root, as we know, the enteral root is dislocation through the enteral tissue, basically. So in this porphyrominas gingivalis, it increases the production of T helper cell 17. A klebsiella strains, they increases the production of T helper cells 1. And campylobacter conchises, they increases the production of THP cell which further releases cytokines, that is interleukin-6, interleukin-beta, TNF-alpha, which is responsible for intestinal permeability and the spread of the disease. The second step is molecular mimicry. Mimicry is basically, as you know, the word is copying, to copy something. So over here, uh, porphyrominus, denticola, and bacillus cereus, it can act similarly to RO60KDA and P. gingivalis this and P. gingivalis, Fusobacterium nucleatum, Streptococcus. These they form epitome or as cell autoantigen, which is similar to pyruvate dehydrogenase complex E2, which basically acts in the primary biliary cirrhosis, whereas the, the upper complex, P. denticola and B. cirrus, the, they form RO60KDA. They are responsible, like this similar uh, protein is detected in case of SLV, that is systemic lupus erythematosus and Jogren syndrome. Now these factors which mimic, they further are responsible for antigen presenting cells in case of antigen presenting cells, they release T cells, which can further form cytokines, and B cells are responsible for production of antibodies. Coming on to autoantigen overproduction. Basically, the production of residual epitope and citrullinated epitope increases due to hydrolysis of enzymes, which are released by the microorganisms. These uh, proteins, basically, they act on the antigen presenting cells they further are responsible for the release of T cells, which form cytokines, and B cells, which form antibodies. The fourth mechanism is amplification of autoimmunity by cytokines. As we know, the pathogenic bacteria uh, are P. gingivalis, Fusobacterium nucleatum, Campylobacter, Conchises. So, in this P. gingivalis, they basically release. Uh, they are responsible for the production of RA-related cytokines, that is T helper cells 1 and T helper cells 17, the increased production and monocyte activation through TLR pathways. And Fusobacterium nucleatum, it is responsible for formation of inflammatory bowel disease by release of uh, enhancing the expression of TNF-alpha, interleukin-beta, interleukin-17, uh, interferon alpha and interleukin 6. Then Campylobacter conchises is responsible for intestinal permeability, increased intestinal permeability as it releases THP1 uh, cells, increased production of these cells, which is responsible for release of further secretion of interleukin 6, TNF alpha, interleukin beta, and this increases the antigen permeability of the colonic epithelial barrier. Now the major pathways, as now you must have heard so many times of P. gingivalis from me, so I'll explain how P. gingivalis plays the role in case of autoimmune diseases, how it triggers the autoimmune diseases. Now you are quite aware of the terms translocation, 
and uh, dysbiosis and molecular mimicry. So I'll just elaborate on those terms. So P. Gingy virus, basically, it translocates bacteria. In, uh, and how does it translocate? It translates to barrier damage, intestinal barrier damage. And as well as we know the stomach acid, which I have told you previously, HCL, there is resistance of this acid. Basically, there is uh, this acid is not that active. So because of that, the, uh, the P. Gingy virus can enter into the intestine and permeability increases, which further releases endotoxin. There is increase in of endotoxin and release of factors such as interleukin-17 and ACPA, uh, which is responsible. That is entry citrullin uh, peptide antibodies, which increase in case of rheumatoid arthritis and inflammatory bowel disease. I will talk about ACPA later when I will talk about rheumatoid arthritis. I will explain the process of ACPA. Then P. Gingy virus, it... Uh, basically possesses immunosuppressive activity uh, by activation of TLR2 MAL P113 uh, K pathway, which further blocks cellular phagocytosis. And P. gingivalis, it uh, inhibits the host protective TLR MYD88, uh, which protects the body. Basically, it is a protective function of the immune system. Then P. gingivalis, it releases pads, that is peptide, arginine, diaminase, and which is responsible for further increase in interleukin-17 and T helper cell-17. P. gingivalis can also play a role. Basically, it uh, affects the function of the complement system and then the final function of the molecular mimicry. In this, it acts as a self-autoantigen in case of uh, PDC-E2, which I had mentioned previously. And it is responsible for biliary uh, disease, basically liver diseases. So coming on to the autoimmune diseases. Autoimmune diseases occur when the immune system loses its ability to differentiate between uh, the uh, differentiate between the normal cells and the foreign invaders and mistakenly affects the healthy cells. So, so far, around 80 autoimmune diseases have been identified, which affects the different parts of the human body. Furthermore, they are characterized by an immune response to self-antigens such as autoantibody producing B cells, autoreactive T cells, and pro-inflammatory cytokines. Now I'll talk about the individual diseases coming on to rheumatoid arthritis first. So rheumatoid, what is rheumatoid arthritis? Rheumatoid arthritis is a chronic progressive autoimmune disease characterized by synovial inflammation and gradual articular cartilage and bone destruction. In this auto antibodies to the citrullinated proteins are one of the diagnostic criteria. Citrullinated proteins I had mentioned previously in the slide in which we talked about the mechanisms. So citrullinated proteins are developed from post-translational arginine modification and catalyzed by peptidyl arginine deaminases. That PADS mechanism, we had seen that it further releases interleukins, which are responsible for the inflammation. The oral bacteria P. gingivalis is responsible for protein citrullination. In the previous slides, you have seen that which further increases it ACPA, which I had mentioned that I'll tell you later, that is entry citrullinated peptide antibodies. In RA patients, anti-PGLPS uh, immunoglobulin antibody levels are inversely associated with the patient's disease activity. And the serum LPS, that is lipopolysaccharide binding protein levels, are linked with the disease biomarker concentration. Thus, these findings are indicated that certain proteins from oral and gut microbiota can affect disease activity in case of RA patients. Now, what is the relationship between oral and gut microbiome and rheumatoid arthritis? So, like I have told you before about the periodontal disease, so P. gingivalis, Fusobacterium nucleatum is released, then our the genetics are affected. Basically, there is alteration, which leads to post-immune state. Oral microbiome alterations occur, and oral microbiome 
as we have read the three different routes it can affect the intestinal microbiota other factors responsible are diet that is intake of sugar and along with that high intake of carbohydrates and fats can disrupt the microbiome and other factors are smoking so all these factors combined together can lead to rheumatoid arthritis then again basically what is the relationship between periodontitis slightly microbiota and rheumatoid arthritis periodontitis is a disease of the oral cavity in which there is inflamed supporting tissues uh, basically gums and other supporting tissues of the teeth and uh, in this the bacteria is involved are t forsythia and p gingivalis and these high expression is responsible for the release of peptidyl adenine deaminase that is pad and this further releases affects periodontitis and then leads to protein citrullination and further release of ra actually this thing they they can be uh, like periodontitis can further release pgingivalis and cause pad and protein citrullination it can go vice versa all these are interrelated then mechanisms of up regulating circulating acps in ra pathology uh, hla drb1 genotype is responsible for enhancement of major histocompatibility complex to binding proteins of citrullinated proteins which further increases circulation of acps and the other factor which i have told you pgingivalis which is responsible for protein citrullination and which increases the production of acps now the alteration of oral microbiota in case of ra the blue bacteria are basically increase and the red ones are decrease so velonella uh, atopopium prevotella leptotriche lactobacillus livarius cryptobacterium curtum and rothia mucilaginosa and rothia dento cariosa are increased whereas these factors p gingivalis hemophilus neisseria and rothia area are decreased now coming on to inflammatory bowel disease what is inflammatory bowel disease basically it is a condition in which the intestines are affected there is ulceration and infection of the intestine so in this uh, it can be of further two types ulcerative colitis and crohn's disease and the main etiological causes involved in ibd progression are environmental and genetic factors so the klebsiella is one of the bacteria it is an oral enterobacteriaceae species which can ectopically colonize and sustain in the colon and cecum and thus induce gut inflammation in a genetically suspected suspectable patient and additionally they can also increase the number of pro inflammatory t helper cells one and which subsequently increases the progression of inflammatory bowel disease so basically the translocation of this bacteria klebsiella leads to the further formation of ibd f nucleatum it damages intestinal epithelial integrity and increases intestinal mucosal permeability which leads to ibd these are the bacteria species which are increased actually this i have taken from few studies that uh, in the saliva samples bacteria species increase in case of ulcerative colitis as streptococcus and enterobacteriaceae whereas in case of bacteria species which are decreased are lactobacillus and prevotella and in case of crohn's disease the bacteria species increase in saliva sample are Bellonellaceae and bacteria species decrease in saliva sample are Neisseriaceae and Haemophilus. Then coming on to type one diabetes. Type one diabetes is characterized by insufficient secretion of insulin by the pancreas. Recent data suggests that oral microbiota can induce gut dysbiosis, which can further lead to gradual insulin resistance. So how the it is interrelated? Oral microbiota. dysbiosis happens which further affects gut dysbiosis and which further affects other body parts so the main mechanism in this involved for the increase insulin resistance are gut dysbiosis increased gut permeability systemic inflammation and metabolic derangement another study reported that tubercular a butyrate producing bacterial population was reduced in the gut microbiota 
after oral garbage of P. gingivalis. Oral bacteria increase in case of uh, TID are streptococcus, echinomyces, prothea, capnal cytophagia, sputigena, and C. ochracea. Now coming on to systemic lupus erythromatosis and primary Jogren syndrome. So in case of SLE, what is SLE? SLE is chronic autoimmune disease of unknown etiology that affects connected tissue of multiple organs, which results in tissue damage and extensive inflammation. Primary Jogren syndrome is an autoimmune condition in which basically there is lymphocytic infiltration of the lacrimal and the slivery glands which results in dry eyes and dry mouth. So why I'm talking about both the diseases together? As we know, both are autoimmune diseases, but in this case, they have shared common epidemiological, clinical, pathogenic, and etiological factors. And that is why they have a common, basically common pathology is shared. A recent study revealed that SLE is linked with increased alpha diversity in both buckle swabs and oral washings. As we know, there is alpha and beta diversity of microorganisms. So in case of SLE, alpha diversity is increased. In case of systemic lupus erythromatosis, bacteria species increase are Velonella, Streptococcus, Prevotella, and the species decrease are Sphingomonodesae, Polomonodesae, and Xanthomonodesae. Now coming on to uh, Jogren syndrome. Basically, uh, as we know, the oral dysbiosis is linked with the gut dysbiosis. So in this, these bacteria are increased in concentration, that is capnocytophagia, dilester, fusobacterium, helicobacter, streptococcus, and villonella, which further disrupts gut microbiota, and there is dysbiosis in the gut microbiota, because of which in the lamina propria, there is release of B cells, TH1 cells, and T regs, which further affects lymphocytes, and there is release of plasma cells. And in the blood circulation, as you know, B cells release autoantibodies, so autoantibodies are formed, and further T helper cells 17 are present. Basically, these T helper cells 17 are present in the slightly glands and in the peripheral blood of the uh, Jogren syndrome patients. Some bacteria microbiota communities are unique, which are responsible for activation and polarization of the lymphocyte subsets. And there is major shift in the microbial differences which are observed in patients with the Jogren syndrome. Like TREGS, TREGS, which we have studied before over here, is uh, it is induced by the Clostridium species also in the intestine and is responsible for the anti-inflammatory response. So in this, basically the mechanism which is responsible is molecular mimicry, which is responsible for the explanation between the microbiome and Jogren syndrome connection. It is generally accepted that the pathophysiological role of B cells and TH17 cells in Jogren syndrome can directly or indirectly play a role in Jogren syndrome. And this T tracks are invaluable and their contribution in the immunotolerance is related to the diet. So all these factors are responsible for the Jogren syndrome. Coming on to the multiple sclerosis. What is multiple sclerosis? It is chronic immune mediated inflammatory neurological disease that widely damages the brain and the spinal cord, which gives rise to demyelination and exogonal and neuronal loss. Numerous studies have shown that gut microbiome plays a major role in the pathogenesis of MS. In this lipid, 654, a known product of P. gingivalis. See, everywhere in all the diseases, you can see the role of P. gingivalis, such a major oral microbiome, which can be targeted in case of autoimmune diseases, has functioned as TLR2 ligand and promotes inflammatory process. So basically, all these are responsible for the inflammatory processes. Now, in this case, which bacteria are increasing the saliva and which are decreased? The increase is Staphylococcus, Echinomyces, Fusobacterium, Bacteroids, Porphyrominas, Prevotella, Bellonella, and the bacteria which are decreased are Formicutes, 
and actino vector then coming on to the autoimmune liver diseases in this uh, as we know the autoimmune liver disease are the chronic inflammatory liver conditions that include autoimmune hepatitis primary biliary cholangitis and primary sclerosing cholangitis pbc and psc now coming on to ais that is autoimmune hepatitis in this uh, in this basically a chronic immune mediated and progressive condition is characterized by elevated serum transaminases hypergamma globinemia and positive autoantibodies and abnormal gut microbiota is reported and this mainly obligate anaerobes are reduced and bilionella are increased in fecal samples so for the gut we take fecal samples in case of oral cavity generally saliva samples are considered for the diagnostic part now coming on to the relationship between the oral gut and liver axis so in this case the enteral route for interaction of the axis that is oral gut and liver axis is through oral dysbiosis that is alteration of oral bacteria which is a hallmark of periodontitis which i told you that it is the inflammation of the supporting tissues of the teeth and this bacteria might be swallowed basically through saliva saliva plays a major role of the transport of bacteria from oral cavity to the gut so or through this the bacteria can be swallowed through saliva and after that as we know that there is a uh, reduce acid gastric production gastric secretion is reduced and in this case in this case basically in the stomach when it is reduced so the p gng virus can survive in in the intestine the basically the bacteria dysbiosis can take place in the intestine in the individuals of periodontitis and chronic liver diseases which can be aggravated by impaired gastric acid secretion which allows bacteria translocation and this is responsible basically in this as we know like polysaccharides is the layer covering the bacteria so it gets disrupted and the uh, bacteria can enter and further in case of after the intestine is affected for that last effect is in the liver the bacteria products reach the liver via portal vein and increase the inflammatory response which further leads to the chronic liver diseases thus the unique anatomy of hepatoenteric portal vein system confirms that oral bacteria and gut bacteria can translocate into liver tissue that triggers immune response so these are the important points which i have mentioned in the box due to impaired intestinal epithelial barrier the oral microbiome Uh, microorganisms and their metabolites reach the liver through hepato or uh, hepato or uh, oral complex basically hepato gut liver complex which subsequently induce activation of the immune cells this is a molecular representation how p gng virus cells plays an important role in affecting our hepatocytes in this p gng virus can affect the hepatic cells that is hepatocyte by uh, release of first of all these cells they invade the uh, hepatocyte and they form lysosome a uh, phagosome complex which form vesicles what are vesicles basically these vesicles are released from the bacteria and which is further responsible for conversion of inactivated gs phospho gsk3 into um, gsk3 active form and further insulin uh, is affected impaired and which is responsible for the release of insulin releasing factor 1 which affects p13k pathway other factors is that p gng virus it it basically affects it uh, basically uh, plays a role by release uh, basically it attaches with the hepatocyte and through tlr4 pathway it further uh, is responsible for mvd88 and further formation of tnf alpha and in this pro inflammatory uh, cytokine interleukin 1 beta is formed and which in the presence of inflozome 
is converted into interleukin 1 beta. So this is how the conversion takes place and how it affects the hepatocyte. Now further, by the release, increased concentration of interleukin 1 beta and TNF alpha. Uh, so the cuisine cell, hepatic stellate cells, these are called hepatic stellate cells, which gets activated. These are uh, like they become activated by uh, the formation of the cytokines and hepatocytes. What does they do? They basically release uh, GAL3 and TGF beta 1 factor, which is increased in the concentration. It is also called galactin 3 and TGF beta 1. And along with that, uh, there is, uh, as we know, there are copper cells present in the liver. In this, MAC2 factor is released, which is responsible for TG, increased concentration of TGF beta R2, which further activates alpha SMA, which is responsible for the differentiation of the cell. Basically, this activated hepatic stellate cells further converts into myofibroblasts. So this is the role of P. gingivalis in case of liver cells. Now, coming on to autoimmune hepatitis. So oral microbiome diversity, which is observed in saliva samples of AIH patients, are the increased bacteria are Velonella and Leptotriche, and these in further increases the cytokine level. And bacteria, uh, which are in decreased concentration, are Streptococcus. Oral microbiota plays a crucial role in shaping the composition and structure of the gut microbiota. And however, the role of oral microbiome in modulating the pathogenesis of AIH needs further studies and further research work. Now coming on to primary uh, biliary cholangitis or PBC. What is, uh, where is, like what is PBC and how, what, uh, where exactly like in liver and in particularly it is found in females. So it is characterized by damage of small intrahepatic bile ducts. And again, the factor responsible for this is microbial imbalance. It is a cholestatic liver disease. It is a chronic disease and it is mainly found in females. So in this case, females are affected. In the uh, basically PBC case, in this case, microbial imbalance take place, which is responsible for liver inflammation. As we know, inflammation can further progress into fibrosis. And at the last stage of liver is liver cirrhosis. So the oral microbiome diversity, which is observed in PBC patients, in case of bacteria samples, again, see the oral cavity samples are studied through saliva. So the, all the studies in this, the bacterial samples are studied in case of saliva. Bacteria species increase in saliva samples are Enterobacteriaceae, Eubacterium, Velonella, Bacteroids, Campylobacter, and Prevotella. And this bacterial species which are decreased are Streptococcus, Fusobacterium, Enterococci, Rothia, and Granulase. So basically, the saliva superintends from PBC patients. So these are the studies what they have suggested. As if these findings, further studies are required to prove this, but still these are from the studies. So the saliva superintends from PBC patients induce the production of inflammatory mediators. And these inflammatory cytokines level were reduced following the effective toothbrushing, suggesting that dysregulated oral microbiota may stimulate inflammatory responses, which is further responsible for PBC. So see how these bacteria are responsible for formation of cytokines, and these cytokines are responsible for inflammation in the body, and it affects different organs of the body, which leads to the autoimmune diseases. Now coming on to primary sclerosing cholangitis, PSC is a rare chronic cholestatic disease characterized by progressive inflammation and fibrosis of the intrahepatic and extrahepatic bile ducts. It can further develop into cirrhosis. So these are the further effects of the disease, cirrhosis, portal hypertension, and liver decompensation in the advanced stages. In this case, bacteria species increase the velonella, Scartovia, Streptococcus, and the species decrease are Rothia and Haemophilus. Now coming on to the immunoglobulin A nephropathy. 
autoimmune diseases take place in liver as well as in kidney so now we'll talk about the kidney basically I, immunoglobulin a nephropathy is an immune mediated and idiopathic glomerulonephritis characterized by mesenterial hyperplasia with iga deposition subsequently iga in patients can later further like this disease can lead to renal failure within 10 to 20 years basically the most common oral bacteria responsible for this disease is mutants streptococcus mutants which can promote deposition of iga1 in mesangial areas in glomeruli by abnormal glycosylation glycosylation of serine and threonine amino acids of iga1 Streptococcus mutants is also bacteria which is seen in case of caries. It is responsible for caries also. So how it is interlinked? And in this case, this type of bacteria, CNM-S mutants, is involved in the progression of IgAN. It is collagen binding S mutants. So in case, this case, the bacteria species increase in saliva samples are granulocyticula, Pastoralaceae, Capnocytophagia, Rothia, Haemophilus, collagen binding protein CNM S mutants. It is very important. And the bacteria species decrease are Prevotella, Velonella, Permicutes, Proteobacteria. Now, this is the last part of the presentation. In this, I would like to highlight how we can take care of our oral microbiota, basically how we can reverse oral microbiota dysbiosis for treating of autoimmune diseases. Now, after reading all these, we have seen that oral microbiota dysbiosis is one of the factors which are responsible for initiation and progression of autoimmune diseases as it affects our gut microbiota and through different mechanisms, it is responsible for progression of autoimmune diseases. So the so basically, what should be our therapeutic approach? So in this case, oral microbiota should be targeted for prevention and treating of autoimmune diseases. Maintenance of the dynamic hemostasis between oral microbiota and the host immune system contributes to maintaining body health. And how it can be maintained? By avoiding the factors which are responsible for dysbiosis, like smoking and diet control. So all these factors are important. Along with that, stress is a major factor nowadays. So working on stress levels basically is one of the major factors which can further play a role in controlling of the autoimmune diseases. And as well as boosting immune system can be the practical strategy for balancing host microbiota. So in this, like I have told you that we have to boost our immune system. So the oral microbiota can be reversed by the use of prebiotics, probiotics, and symbiotics. Prebiotics affect the gut microbiota composition and are beneficial for the microbial metabolites. And uh, probiotics are basically, uh, the probiotics are non-digestible fibers that we help to grow bacteria. And symbiotics, what are symbiotics? They are combination of prebiotics and probiotics. Prebiotic D tagastose suppresses the growth of oral pathogens Streptococcus mutans and Streptococcus gordonii. Prebiotic affect gut microbiota composition and enhance the production of beneficial microbial metabolites for pathogenic bacterial suppression and gut bacteria barrier improvement. So how basically it affects? Basically, it affects the gut microbiota also and which can further help in control of our oral microbiota. And this targeting microbiota derived metabolites might be an effective therapy for treating oral microbiota mediated autoimmune diseases. Other factors which are important for reversal of oral microbiota dysbiosis are keeping good oral hygiene, which is one of the most important factors because if the oral hygiene is maintained, there are less chances of periodontitis, gingivitis, and oral infections. So through which the infection, basically the oral bacteria can spread into the systemic circulation. So for controlling that, oral hygiene plays a major role. Then low carbohydrate diet, fat diet and sugar diet, following healthy lifestyle. 
And a recent study by Huang et al. has proposed that oral microbiota translocation can also be an effective strategy for treating oral microbiota mediated autoimmune diseases. I would I also like to highlight these therapies and telling related to oral microbiota, but there are specific therapies related to gut microbiota also, that is fecal microbiota transplantation. It is also an upcoming therapy. And if we can combine all these therapies together, if we can work on gut as well as oral microbiota, we can somehow work on the autoimmune diseases and we can protect further spread of the disease in the body or like basically the disease can be controlled through these patterns and even disease can be diagnosed through these patterns like the oral microbiota can be diagnosed through saliva and gut microbiota through fecal samples so these are important and as you are from most of the of you are from microbiology background so you know the importance of the bacteria in the body now the treatment strategy on balancing oral microbiota for autoimmune diseases. Uh, this is what I have told you before, keeping good oral hygiene, low carbohydrate diet, and following a healthy lifestyle that is quitting, uh, quit smoking. And along with that, now we have, uh, I've just told you about the probiotics, symbiotics, and prebiotics. And these are responsible for oral microbiota metabolites they are responsible for the uh, they are beneficial for the production of these metabolites that is short chain fatty acids tryptophan organic acids and along with that uh, in the previous slide i have mentioned d tagatose it suppresses streptococcus mutans and streptococcus gordonii and i have also spoken about oral microbiota transplantation so all these factors and one, one more upcoming technology is nanomedicine-based therapy. And it is said that nanomedicine and OMT combination can help in balancing of oral microbiota. In case of nanomedicine, basically, uh, in this case, TNF-alpha and Psi RNA can play an important role as nanomedicine with targets increased production of TNF-alpha levels which can maintain oral microbiota. So these are the factors which are responsible for dysbiosis, that is increasing driving factors, that is stress, genetic factors are responsible, along with that diet and poor oral hygiene, function of immune system is affected, and increase of pathogenic bacteria. If the pathogenic concentration is increased, it can lead to the disease state and which can lead to oral microbiota dysbiosis, which can further cause autoimmune diseases. So to conclude, the oral microbiota dysbiosis plays a crucial role in modulating the initiation and development of many autoimmune diseases. Targeting oral microbes may be a strategy for treatment of autoimmune diseases, along with that, even targeting gut microbes. Only a few clinical trials have evaluated the role of oral microbiota-based therapies on autoimmune diseases. Actually, till now, most of the studies for autoimmune diseases have been conducted on gut microbiota, and the effect of gut microbiota therapies are studied in case of autoimmune diseases. But only few studies have targeted oral microbiota for autoimmune diseases, and still a lot of research is required in case of oral microbiota therapies which can further prevent the spread of autoimmune diseases. Systemic combination of metabolomics, metagenomics, metatranscriptomics, and proteomics might improve our understanding of the complex interactions between oral microbial ecosystem and immune system, which might provide novel oral microbiota targets for treating autoimmune diseases. Thank you everyone for your patient listening. Thank you, Dr. Kaur. So it's a very nice, uh, wonderful presentation. So now it's open for this uh, discussion. Any questions? Audience breaks?
Any questions? Achha, one question from my side, Mr. Yes, sir. So, as you told that P gingerbread have the ability to withstand uh, stomach ability, acidity, probably, and colonize the intestine. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, what are the mechanisms by P gingerbread to be elevated to the immune systems? Uh, basically, as I have told you that P. gingivalis is a bacteria which can be present in oral cavity and it is a pathogenic bacteria and it can be translocated in the gut. But uh, like I have told you that the stomach acidity is uh, basically stomach acids, they can dissolve this bacteria, but uh, this bacteria has capability to withstand stomach acidity. Even though I don't know much mechanisms in detail, I will also find out about that, but it has a cap capability to withstand that. That is why it can survive in the intestine and it, it is responsible for the autoimmune diseases. Okay. So what are the specific mechanisms by which the oral microbiota can trigger the immune, system, immune response? Um, molecular mimicry, autoimmune antigen amplification, all these mechanisms which I had spoken before. All the four mechanisms are responsible for the production, basically for the formation of autoimmune diseases. Okay, but uh, is this the lifestyle factors uh, or diet? Anyone to smoke and uh, drinking influence to the composition of uh, oral microbiota or autoimmune disease? All these factors are very important, and I think they play a crucial role because uh, basically. Actually, frankly, I would tell, like to tell my story over here. I had history of rheumatoid arthritis and uh, like uh, for like 15 years, I've been on medication immunosuppressants, but past three years with the change of lifestyle, with the change of eating habits, like I have, like I'm completely off medication past three years. So mm -hmm. that is why this is my topic of interest because all these factors, healthy lifestyle plays a major role in the shift of autoimmune diseases. Like all yes, that, yeah, like yes, we say. <laughs> so are there specific bacteria that are known to migrate to the oral cavity to the goat? Yeah, P. gingivalis, then porphyro, uh, this uh, fusobacterium nucleatum, campobacteria, all these bacteria can uh, for, are responsible. Klebsiella is responsible. So all these bacteria can move bellonella. I've spoken about those bacteria which are responsible for intestinal damage and can cause autoimmune diseases. Okay. Okay. Is it a life threatening diseases? All are. Actually, I believe these diseases people generally don't understand the situation of the patient because mm -hmm. uh, generally it is not seen from the outside, but inside patient is really suffering with a lot of pain and uh, like it is not generally expressed. But like if you see a person with a disease, you might think a person is normal, but these pains are very difficult. And plus along with that, as we know, autoimmune diseases like SLE, it can lead to like it can damage other organs also it can involve other organs and lifespan of patients with sle is very less so i think it's better to keep check of these diseases and as soon as if we have any therapies like upcoming therapies in this area it will be really helpful and contribute in the area of autoimmune diseases okay. the moral of story is that we will maintain our uh, lifestyle factors <laughs> Yeah, lifestyle and basically in the young generation, you must have seen that smoking, vaping is a very common habit in the young generation. Mm -hmm. Even doctors have this habit, actually. So uh, controlling of these habits, alcohol abuse, anything excess can actually damage the system. So healthy lifestyle, exercise, diet control, all these factors are responsible and which is responsible for reversal of the dysbiosis also. Somehow, all there are multiple factors. I know apart from these, there are genetic factors also responsible for these diseases. It's not only the diet, but there are genetic factors also. But somehow, there is interplay of all these factors, which is 
responsible for the disease okay so any suggestion from this young generation from oral microbiota <laughs> I would suggest if anyone you can uh, all of you can uh, come up with some studies related to autoimmune diseases and work on in this area research area in which oral and gut microbiota is involved. Mm -hmm. Frankly, it is one of my area of interest, and I want to pursue research in this area, oral and gut microbiota, and as well as autoimmune diseases. I mm -hmm. believe if because recently you must be you must have known biologics is one of the therapies. In case of autoimmune diseases, and uh, like it is given in oral form also, like drugs like Toba is given. Then uh, biologics like Ruditex RA, all these biologics are used, and they are very helpful because in my case also Ruditex RA really worked in my case. But mm. uh, like coming up with different therapies targeting and patient comfort, if we can provide comfort to the patient in any way. It would be a great help from the science community to the autoimmune disease patients. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, excuse me, ma'am. Can I can I ask you, ma'am? Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, ma'am, good evening. Good so, ma'am, if you want to uh, if you want to continue our research in this uh, about oral bacteria, ma'am, uh, in normal uh, people sample, which bacteria we will get the most? I think PGNJ virus is the best bacteria to target because it is easily like you can get through plaque of the patients and even saliva samples. You can focus you said on saliva is used as a sample. Yeah, saliva like salivary studies are carried out, and it is one of the like upcoming methods of diagno diagnostic methods in case of autoimmune diseases. And even uh, recently, I got in touch with few scientists who are working on biosensors also. So even uh, yes. oral diseases can be diagnosed like with the help of since you are from microbiology background, you must be aware of it. I am from dental background. I don't know much yes, about yes, it. Actually. Yes, ma'am. So ma'am, no, in this uh, uh, gingivalis species, we can can we relate with this uh, liver cirrhosis? What you said? Yes, it can be related with liver cirrhosis also. Because ma'am, you uh, said it is more in female patients. Is there any yeah. reason? Is there any reason that means they do, don't put that much effort for the oral hygiene or anything because cirrhosis? See, you said, in females, yeah. Uh, please continue. Sorry, please continue. Ma'am, no. Um, you said no. It is uh, much more okay. uh, more in case of female patients than in male. Uh, yeah. Can I know the reason? I feel like in Indian society, especially, the stress is very common factor in females. Like generally, uh, more than males, some of the factors. Uh, like it could be one of the factors what i feel in females which is responsible for autoimmune disease in liver okay A any genetical studies ma'am uh, can you refer that this happens more in female do you know actually i have not referred much studies i could only find yes, few yes. articles on oral microbiota but i'll surely okay, mention okay. that article in uh, uh, in yes, my reference in my reference this is mm. uh, uh, you can go through this article. Uh, I'll just tell you. Sorry. You can either read this one. Uh, this is by Tan X et al. Uh, the yes. interplay between oral microbiota, gut microbiota, and systemic diseases. And yes. another one is just a moment. Um, This progress in oral microbiome related to oral and systemic diseases. Okay. okay. So, okay. Uh, yeah. And even this one, this oral microbiome in autoimmune diseases, friend or foe. This is uh, in the basically, I could find major information in these articles because, yeah, generally there are very few studies related to oral microbiome and autoimmune diseases. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. You can check these Thank articles, you. and if you want to connect further, yes. you can take my number from Sir, and you can connect me, and we can further discuss on this topic. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from other students?
actually someone has mentioned in comments that even hormonal level in females could be disturbed that could be one of the factors too i agree with that also because in female there are multiple factors which could be responsible for autoimmune diseases any questions so i think someone has raised a hand or um... okay now we will be end of the session any questions from the audience sides okay thank you everyone so on the, uh, this is the, now we will be end of the session so thank you dr kar on behalf of gtd biosciences i would like to express my sincere gratitude to uh, dr kar for gracing with us her presence and sharing her invaluable slide in today's webinar so your expertise and contribution to the field of medical science are truly commendable her uh, experience research experience and accomplishment have greatly enhanced our understanding of oral microbiota and significance of pathogenesis by autoimmune diseases so we are uh, immensely grateful to the willingness of our estimated speaker so that deeply understand to the crucial area of research so your presentation has uh, undoubtedly broaden our knowledge uh, and uh, insight knowledge in the latest advancement and uh, train to the oral field uh, your present dedication and expertise are inspired all this audience and uh, me also i am really inspired for this uh, presentations uh, are developed to our knowledge uh, from, from the oral healthcare and research and innovations we would uh, like to extend our really our gratitude to all these uh, participants and attending to this webinar today and uh, making this round success uh, your activeness participant inside the questions and the contributions to the enhancing to the discussion sections i hope all these questions um, the dr kalpan call is uh, sharing to the answer so lastly i would uh, acknowledge to the effort to the heredity bio team devasis susri and uh, sriram and others in their well contribution to make this webinar possible their hard work and dedication last to one month are greatly appreciated once again i had full thanks to dr gilpit gilpit kaur for sharing a, her expertise and inviting us with her invaluable slide we hope this is your webinar has been an enlightening experience for all we are looking forward to the future lessons for the research as well as for this uh, research collaborations writing to this paper and everything on the research part i am also uh, one of this uh, uh, part of this oral microbiota that is i am some of the work i am doing already and i am collaborating some of the hospitals also so they are uh, we are mutually to do some of the ex uh, experimental part microbiology experimental part and for the future we will be write some of the papers and we will collaborate on that thank you dr kar for this uh, nice uh, uh, our invitations and your thought in your times so we really precious and we will given for the time and uh, sharing for the thought thought to all this audience uh, i'm heartfelt uh, really thank you thank you thank you thank you sir for giving me opportunity Yeah, as a I, speaker it, it was a great session so many uh, biomedical any, students any any <laughs> any help from my side and uh, you directly contact to the sushri also she will be uh, any time to uh, see is my phd scholar yes sir <laughs> great session sir <laughs> and uh, we are trying to uh, isolate to the candidates and put in a oral sites uh, so she is doing for the phd from that to uh, candidate so we will write to the further future collaborations for the paper writing for our publications and uh, i will be connecting okay so, thank you sir so more of this paper related things and research related thing i will uh, collaborate to you and we will write to the publication very soon yes thank you it would be great <laughs> <laughs> definitely uh, uh, the world is very small so that's yeah. why we are connecting to the research part and uh, definitely we will be collaborating okay okay thank you, thank you.
so thank you audience uh, we are we already said to the feedback link you uh, feel to this feedback link so accordingly we will give for the certain place to in your uh, meal so hopefully one should be uh, it is helpful to the uh, session so thank you thank you everyone